In this video, I will be demonstrating the determination of dipyridamol pKa, a basic compound using pion Sirius T3. Sirius T3 is a fully automated system which determines the pKa values using two techniques, the spectrometric with the fast UV and UV metric, and for not UV active compounds, the potentiometric. It has three modules, the dispenser module, the titrator, and the autoloader. The dispenser unit automatically dispenses the water, the titrans, base, an acid, neutral linear buffer for fast UV assays, partition solvent for log P measurements, and cosolvents from a six wave valve, which allows the addition of up to six different cosolvents. All these dispensers are connected with the reservoir bottles for each reagents and titrans following a color code, red for the acid, blue for the base, white for the water, yellow for the octanol, orange for the buffer, and black for the six cosolvents situated in the back of the tray. To avoid the contamination of the carbon dioxide, the titrans are under inert atmosphere conditions. From a bottle full of deionized water, the argon is bubbling. The wet argon will go to the water and from the water to the base, from the base to the control bubbler. The D3 probe arms perform titrations with a high degree of accuracy through autonomous reaction addition and data collection. Essay conditions are tightly controlled and data is collected in situ and in real time using a mini electrode for millivolt readings, the temperature sensor, and the UV Pro connected to the spectrometer. The stirrer on the left, six capillaries from which reagents and solvents are dispensed, and an inert gas line which permits the titrations be performed under inert atmosphere. All these devices work in tandem to carry out precise and reproducible assays. In the titrator module at the front is the titration and reference positions, the water wash position and the drain, two wash positions for the surfactant and the solvent, pH7 buffer and the storage solution. The titrator arm moves through these static solutions to clean the probes after and before each assay and to calibrate the electrode. We also have an automated sonicator to help the solution of solid samples and a an sponge for removing excess of water from vials after sonication. The autoloader module fitted for trace and includes the vial arm, which moves vials between the racks and the safe positions. Each vial rack has eight rows and six columns, a total of 192 vial positions. Using the fast UVSA, which is six minutes per essay, so 20 minutes per triple titration, allows you to perform in one day 72 essays. For samples poorly soluble, the sonicator could be added automatically at the beginning of the essay to help the solution before the essay starts. Let's switch to the instrument control screen. I will now load the templates into the well positions. In position A1, I create a fast UV buffer calibration, and in position A2, I will create a fast UV pKa assay. As a basic compound is being titrated, the direction of the titration is run from low to high pH. For compounds, we do exhibit solubility issues. We can adjust the cosolvent conditions of each titration using the cosolvent volumes dialog box. 
poor solubility can be compensated for either by increasing the percentage of cosolvent in each titration or by changing the cosolvent type. Then I will specify the details of the sample by creating a sample model. First, I specify the sample form, then millimolar DMSO stock solution, and then specify the volume, then the sample name. This is the most basic level of information which is required to run a PKA assay on T3. However, if more information is entered into the sample model, providing at least estimated PKA's values facilitate the software's auto refinement feature. To take advantage of this, I will add a predetermined sample structure to this model, generated by the SA expert function built into T3. SA expert is capable of producing in silico estimations of the PKA values of compounds, in addition to solubility and log P. These predictions are tied to the structure file by SA expert and by importing the structure to the sample model. The software automatically fills out all the predicted VSCAM information into the model. Upon starting the assay, the robotics begin to move. The autoloader checks that the titration position is clear before moving the assay vial into position. And the probe arm wash the probes in the wash position. It will also record a reference millivolt readings for the electro in the pH 7 buffer. The dispenser unit prepares the reagents needed for the assay. The probe will rinse the excess of drops from the reagents and finally will move to the sample position. It's now when the dispenser unit at the media, equals or cosolvent, depending on the type of the assay. And the titrants, always starting the assay at the pH where the compound is ionized to help the dissolution of the sample, adding base when the compound is an acid and adding acid when the compound is a base. In the fast UVSA, the instrument automatically adds the water, cosolvent, and buffer reagents. Then the temperature is fixed to the value set in the assay design, in this instance 25 degrees. The medium is then adjusted to the starting pH value of 2 using the acid titron. From the starting pH, the instrument adds base, and after each addition, record the pH value of the medium at that point, the UV spectrum and the temperature. In this view, we can see the status of the titration, including the pH reading, the temperature, and the reagent volumes added up to that point. The instrument log on the right side records all instrument actions during every assay performed. We can also view the spectral data being collected in real time. We'll skip ahead to completion. When they say finalize, the probe arm washes the probes in the wash positions. The T3 returns the save vial to the source position and the robotics move back to the standby positions. The say is safe and refined automatically by the software.
The T3 refinement software visualizes the titration data as you see here in a plot of the UV absorbance per monitor wavelength, represented by the purple lines versus pH. We can see quite clear that around pH 5-7, there are apparent changes in absorbance over multiple wavelengths, visualized by the crossing purple lines, which indicates there is UV active ionization occurring in this pH region. Overlaid on this plot, you can also see a distribution of a species profile, which describes the ionization of the sample according to the number of PKA which are defined in the sample model. And the current result of the PKA calculations display with these flags. The different colors of the profile represents the different ionizable states. In this case, the blue represents the cationic form and the red the neutral form. The percentage of each ionized species can be read from the secondary y-axis relative to any pH. If there is a disagreement between the model applied to the data and the data itself, then the applied model is not an adequate description of the data which has been collected. If the percentage of species data points align perfectly with the model, then the model matches with the true number of PKAs within the data and the PKA values calculated by the software can be taken to be the correct PKA values of the sample. Once the PKA calculation is complete, we can view a collection of other useful information, including the molar absorption profile of each of the ionizable states. When all the titration are processed, we can also view the overall PKA result at the top of the file, which in the case of the cosolvent PKA assays will present the equals PKA value extrapolated from the PSKA values determined under each of the different cosolvent conditions of the assay using the Yasuda Shetlovsky extrapolation equation. The individual titration results are presented in the top right. From this final PKA result, we can also view the distribution of a species under equals conditions, from which we can calculate the percentage of each species present at particular pH values. The instrument also offers the UV metric assay more accurate than the screening fast UV. And when the sample is not UV active, the potentiometric technique will be applied. Sirius T3 can also determine lipophilicity log P with octanol as the default partition solvent and also solubility with aqueous or cosolvent media using the patented checksol method developed by Pion. This video concludes here. If you have any questions or you need any more information, please contact Pion.